Qualcomm is at it again, and they have a brand new processor to take on Apple's M3. Now, in this video, we have the official specs and benchmarks, plus I have some leaked benchmarks comparing to Apple's best, which Qualcomm is saying that this new chip is faster than the leading ARM competitors, which is that M3 chip. Now, recently, we've been talking about their Snapdragon X Elite chip, although in info we have and stuff that wasn't talked about. And we even visited San Diego and checked out the factory, talked to engineers. And with that chip that looks very impressive, we had a question, well, well, you guys can change the TDPs and that makes a little bit of sense, but are you gonna be offering other chips? And now we know they are. Now this is a smart move, just like what Apple does, they bin chips so they will create different core counts and that allows it to be a lot cheaper than having one massive chip that they have to sell. So this is gonna come in in thin and light notebooks. So you're gonna have fanless machines like the M3 MacBook Air that are gonna be less expensive and that is great news for everybody. But unlike the M3, Qualcomm is doing things a little bit differently. The clock speed across all the cores is at 3.4 gigahertz, so that is lower than the X Elite. Whereas with Apple's chips, they keep the core count consistent all across, which means that you get the same amount of single core performance. Now, they shared the Geekbench multi-core score and it does look impressive. It beats out the M3 by about 10% percent and of course it is slower than the x elite which makes complete sense and just like in my previous videos i said that the x elite is not an m3 competitor it is an m3 pro competitor and now this confirms it but what they didn't talk about is that single core score the x elite scores about 2700 which is competitive with the m2 chip but this new X Plus, because of the lower clock speed, is going to be worse, which is why we don't have any numbers yet. And I'm estimating maybe about 2400 or so, which is actually on the level of Apple's M1 chip. And that's not a huge deal breaker, but that is a difference compared to the way that Apple is doing. Now, one thing that they are doing similarly to Apple is cutting down the core count. The X Elite is a 12 core core chip, whereas the M3 is an eight core chip. You have four performance and four efficiency. Um, but with this new plus, it is a 10 core layout. So still more cores than what you get with the M3. And that actually matches up more to an M3 Pro. Now they're also not talking about performance per watt compared to the M3, but they are comparing it to their Intel and AMD competition, which they showed off that you get 37% better performance at the same watt, or at the same performance level, you'll actually use 54% less power. Now, of course, this is an ARM chip, and this is why we're so excited to have these kind of chips in Windows laptops, but it is my estimation that the M3 is still gonna be beating it out, but of course, that is a three nanometer process. Now we're also gonna have to wait to get actual performance numbers for some of these kind of tests. Like for example, we have Wildlife Extreme for the graphics. We don't have a lot of graphics info, but compared to Intel graphics, which aren't very good, you have 36% faster GP performance at the same watt or 50% less power at the same performance. So we definitely have an increase um, of performance there, but I do not think it's gonna be able to match up with Apple's M3 chips, and of course the M3 Pro as well. Even the X Elite is not going to be able to uh, touch what Apple can do. Now on the positive side, they have not cut down the NPU performance at all. I previously talked about their massive 45 tops of performance and how it destroys Intel and it beats out Apple as well. Now we've been digging into those numbers and the crazy thing, if you don't know about tops performance, trillions of operations per second, well, there's different ways of measuring it and companies can change that to help their marketing. So it could still have that massive leap against Apple 
or if they are using Int8 instead, well, the difference could be not very much better than what Apple is offering. So we're gonna have to see that, but at least this Plus chip doesn't get any worse than the Elite, and a lot more things are starting to use that, which actually saves you performance. Now, I mentioned that we have some extra benchmarks, and this is from Geekbench ML. We have a CPU inference score of 2410 for this plus chip. And it's interesting that this leaked because we don't have this for the X Elite version, which would be higher because this is doing ML on the CPU. And looking at the Mac, that is 2383 on the M3 CPU. Um, so that is very close, but the um, Qualcomm chip is beating it out. But I also found the score for using a similar test, but using the graphics side of it. And here we have 1903 using graphics and the M3 gets 5,868. So that has literally triple the performance um, doing this task uh, with graphics. Of course, we're going to have a difference in terms of gaming performance and other things like video editing and other acceleration. And this kind of stuff could be done on the neural engine. But if you want to do it really fast, but less efficiently, you can use the GPUs and the Mac is very, very fast. That's just giving you a preview of some of the graphics performance differences. Now I have to mention a few areas where the M3 is falling behind. And the first one is the display support. Apple added an additional display if you close down the actual laptop, but the X Plus can support three external displays plus the one internally. So, and that is on their budget chip. And then with that, uh, it also is gonna have 5G built in. And I still don't get why Apple hasn't put that in any of their MacBooks. They could do it, they could charge you extra like they do on iPads, but they're not. And that is something that is very convenient, not having to tether. And so that, including the NPU, which they showed real world performance of how much faster it is compared to Intel's. I mean, they are really pushing the limits of what's possible with this budget chip. Now, the real question is gonna be how much will these laptops cost? And just like I expected, the X Elite they are not gonna to be too cheap. But this X Plus, which has lower clock speeds, it has been as well, um, it's easier to make those chips, well, that's gonna come in at a lower price and that's gonna be great for competition and great to kick Apple up a bit to start making some of their chips have bigger gains year over year because the competition is coming. And of course, we know that Intel is working on some stuff as well with really good efficiency. Uh, so it's gonna be a very, very exciting year for people that enjoy tech and also people that wanna buy a new laptop and they care about efficiency, they care about battery life. Finally, we're gonna have some great competition coming. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below and click that circle above to subscribe. And if you want more info on the X Elite, we have some videos right over there. Thanks for watching, this has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.